on behalf of uh, Papa and the AATG, I'd like to thank you each and every one of you to participate in this event, especially in the morning of Saturday. So in these days, we all know that how important an impact social media has within our everyday lives. The importance is especially emphasized when such social media are used as a form of communication. So people use social media to connect friends and families and event gatherings and business activities. But today, we have guest Mr. Richard Kaysen. We'll talk about the effect and the impact of social media for political campaigns. So since year 2016, Rick Kaysen has been the director of communication for the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, where he creates and supports business, community, and political programs and campaigns. Previously, Mr. Kaysen led multiple divisions at the city of Cupertino. Programs and his direction consistently won national and international awards and competitions. So Rick has worked as a communication advisor for agencies and officials ranging from the city Valley to members of European Parliament. Mr. Kaysen has been active in local political um, campaigns since year 1988. So he's really the pioneer by using the vehicle of social media to run the political events. Without further ado, please Welcome, Mr. Richard Kaysen. Thank you for um, coming out today. Happy Veterans Day. Uh, as you heard, I um, have some history with uh, local government and campaigns. Uh, one of my first campaigns was when I was working for, I was actually an intern with Santa Cruz County Supervisor Joe Kuchara, and there was a gypsy moth infestation in Santa Cruz County and the state was going to come in and spray pesticides over everyone and everything. And uh, that was my very first campaign was uh, to fight against that program and we were successful. Uh, other campaigns include fluoridation. Yes, people are still passionate about fluoridation, both for and against. Worked with other elected officials, uh, the friends of mine ran uh, successfully for uh, Sunnyvale City Council. Uh, I spent uh, quite a few years with uh, Supervisor Rod Geard on working on transportation and other related issues. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, social media is in the news. It's a, it's a big deal. And it seems to cover everything. which uh, as the more you learn about it, the more you realize that's absolutely true. There is, there is absolutely no end to how you could spend your time on the almost infinite number of channels that exist now, that didn't exist previously, uh, that are available to anyone who wants to use social media, and more specifically, people who want to be active in, in their uh, community and really step out as, and serve as community leaders. My focus today really has to do with this. It, it's really a, a type of digital undertow and, and represents one of the biggest challenges to any any candidate and community leader. What I'm going to be talking about is not new. I'm going to be handing out materials from other organizations. I'm not selling anything. I'm not a consultant. Uh, but I have experience and I'm, I'm happy to share that. The solution and the important discipline that any community needs to have is to focus and prioritize. And Today, we're, I'm going to be sharing some of the some of the best practices that I've seen that that work most effectively. Yeah, 
Yeah, if yeah. you would. Well, that's the space bar, right? So for any number, for any one of those channels, there's a best practice. There's, there's behaviors, there's standards, there's, there's uh, steps that you need to take if you're going to address the information demands of the channel. Information is perishable. Let's say that again. Information is perishable. You can't just put something up or put something out there and expect it to continue to be relevant. So depending on the channel, that perishability may vary, but for almost all social media, it's very perishable. So you must, you must have a regular routine, you must have discipline in order to schedule that information share. Uh, next slide. Right. So your frequency, there's recommended frequencies, whatever works for you. Uh, this has LinkedIn two to five times per week. I, I think that's a lot for LinkedIn. You just need to figure out what will work for you. And whatever it is you've set as your, your frequency or the, the right amount of sharing for you, just stick to that. Go ahead. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. So I, have a, I did bring a handout because there's always presentation issues. Be prepared for that. That's free. Well, free. Question. Yeah. Is this a uh, posting or checking the, the frequency? Is this what? for uh, how often you check, check your oh, accounts? Yeah. This how is often how often you're posting, you're how often posting. you're sharing. Right. So social media is, is a little different than, say, a website where you, uh, and we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about websites. Social media is more like a, uh, a telephone call. When someone posts to your Facebook or, or tweets you, you should respond. There is an expectation of dialogue or at least acknowledgement. So you can like their post back. You don't necessarily need to, to write anything, but that acknowledgement is the, is the fundamental connection and step for a relationship, which is what you want as a candidate and which is what you need to do. All of this is really all about people. All the technology we're talking about is all about people. So to the extent that voters are receiving information where there's not a person on the other side, then it's spam. Then it's a robocall. There's no relationship. It's like when you, you call for help and you know your call is important, but nobody's there to talk to. Well, Obviously, it's not important enough for them to have someone there to help you. Having that person on the other side of the communication, real or perceived, is what creates connection. So start small. You saw the, you saw the cyclone of digital undertow in that first slide. The way to avoid that is start small. If you're not, most, is there anyone here who's not already up on Facebook? No. Good. No. Thank you. Uh, as a campaign, start small. Okay. Uh, focus on the content type. What are you going to do? Are you are you sharing personal messages? Today I'm meeting with the League of Women Voters. Today I'm at City Hall. Uh, or are you posting? Is it more, much more personal? Today I, I went and had some great sushi. Uh, check out this restaurant. You're you're an advocate for local business. Um, the, the big advantage with uh, social media is you can show personality, but be consistent. This goes back to your schedule. You, you must be consistent. You can't post throughout October, happy Halloween everybody, and then nobody hears from you again until Thanksgiving. But again, there's that perishability. You, if, if you left all that time empty, people are going to forget about you. You're no longer relevant. Go ahead. This is uh, one of the fundamental steps for any campaign. 
uh, and, and certainly I'm, I want to hear more from, from David when he talks about the plans he used. I did, uh, I took the opportunity to poke around and investigate David digitally. <laughs> <laughs> he shows all indications of having a plan and having a program. And you can see that when you, when you see a, a good website with robust connections to Twitter or Facebook or any number of other avenues. That's discipline, that's a plan, and candidates, successful and effective candidates, have communication objectives. It may sound cynical, uh, but every communication has an objective. We're communicating animals, we do it without thinking about it. We're like, we're like fish. There's the old fish swimming along, the two young fish. The old fish says to the young fish, how's the water? And the young fish swim on and one looks at the other and says, well, what's water? Communications is our water. So having a plan, having an objective, anything that you do should have an objective. It could be just to let people know that you're a regular person. It could be to let people know that there is an important community meeting that you're going to be presenting at. But have an objective, have a plan, and stick to the plan. The relationships that you create will allow you to convert those online activities into offline action. Could be turnout at a community meeting, could be a discussion at a, a meeting such as this. It ultimately, and I think most uh, importantly, it could, a vote. People voting. You, you need to convert that, that relationship, that online chatter into, into voting. And again, and again and again, tailor your communications to your specific campaign objectives. You're the, you're the young, new, uh, tell them we're enemy. Uh, you're the young, new fret, breath of fresh air, or you're the experienced resident who is finally getting involved. Have, have a tone, have a theme. Those will help organize your uh, messages later on. And that's how people will remember you. Uh, next slide, please. If you're running for office, or if you're just fighting an issue, fighting's not a good word, you're you have a community issue. Uh, it could be about a development, it could be about uh, school fees, really anything. See what, see what people are saying. See what the opposition is saying. Uh, do a little homework. It doesn't take a lot of work to, to do this, but it will pay big dividends. See what others are posting. See what people are reacting to. Uh, we see a lot of this happening on the uh, national level. A lot of people are playing to the reaction, for better or worse. That, that's it, it's an it's an effective, not necessarily a constructive tool. But see what gets a reaction. It doesn't always have to be negative. Doesn't always have to be fear. There's other cards to play in that deck, but see, see what people respond to. Uh, an important part of looking what people are saying and doing background uh, checks on the opposition. As a candidate, your friends will tell you all the different ways that you're right. Mm -hmm. All the different ways in which they agree with you, 
and all the all the temptations you will have to compromise and uh, stray from your path. Your opponents are the only ones who are really going to t be consistently honest enough to tell you how you might be wrong, how you might be mistaken, how you may have the wrong information, or even be listening to the, the wrong people. So, always taken with a grain of salt, but looking at what the opponents are talking about, your opponents are talking about, that's really important. Because you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear from everybody that disagrees with you, and ultimately, if you're successful, you're gonna be hearing from people that you may end up representing. So you need to know where they're coming from. Feel free to disagree with any of them. <laughs> um, okay, next slide. Now, there's some great websites. I definitely recommend. They can be very entertaining and educational. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, our presentation technology doesn't allow us to have internet access, so we're just going to have to leave it at that. But I, uh, I can tell you. Uh, I have Barack Obama here. If you go to BarackObama.com, he was one of his team, his organization was one of the first to really uh, get it right in the, in the modern era. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that you can do when you have a lot of money and you hire top-notch professionals to run your campaign. Go there. Uh, I haven't seen the Trump page recently, probably very similar now. Um, Pat McCrory, uh, anyone sound familiar at all? I think he's the governor in North Carolina now. The uh, birth gender <coughs> bathroom issue, not taking sides, very good. He has a great campaign website. Uh, poor George here, he's easy to pick on because he's on the other side of the country and I, hopefully no one here is a good friend of his. Um, it's it's a, a good example of what not to do. Uh, probably running his own campaign, oversharing on his website. Jerry Brown, he's got a pretty good one. Uh, there's there's other candidates. They come in uh, different flavors. I know all of these. I know uh, all of these people. Jim Bell. I've known for a while. To my taste, hope he doesn't see this recording. It's a little busy. Uh, uh, Anna Eshoo again has very much the modern uh, the modern uh, look and feel. Go ahead. Next slide. Next slide. Um, so going back to um, going back to the one point I hope you take away from this is, is have an objective. Know what it is you're going to be sharing. Know why you're sharing it. Let them know that uh, this is a beautiful flower arrangement. What a nice treat in a very busy business morning to have a, a personal touch like that. That's something you can do in, in social media that you can't send out an email about or a campaign email. And that would be very appropriate and show that, gosh, this person is a, is a real person. Your social media is just the tip of the iceberg. It is just one facet of a much larger of a, of a much larger organization or a much larger effort fun most fundamental it can be a hub it can be a spoke on a hub in this case think of it as a pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid is you uh, running for office is, isn't easy it's very very difficult and most people lose 
most successful people try again. Repeat that. Most people lose. Most successful people will try again. One of the most important uh, correlations to a successful candidate is name recognition. One of the best ways to get name recognition is to run and to get started and to have a campaign and build those, build those foundations that you need. At the other end of that pyramid, at the peak of the pyramid, is social media. It, but it is just literally the, the, tip of the tip of the iceberg. It is just one, it is the more, most visible asset or aspect of your, your organization, your effort. Uh, think about how you want to sound, and in social media in particular, show personality. Uh, there is a, uh, I think a Gafferty, uh, I would show you, but there is a, uh, he was running for commissioner in Texas. Uh, and his wife, and it's a campaign piece, basically done from his wife's perspective, saying, you know, please elect him, please. Very, very funny, uh, a lot of personality. It, it ended up going viral. He didn't win, just so you know. It, it, this isn't about winning, this is about running a good campaign. But you, you need to show personality uh, on social media. People want to know that, that you're a human. Uh, next slide. And then uh, just do it. Don't. Yeah, it's not. You're not carving stone tablets. You're not. It's all perishable. You create a website yayme.com and you decide that's not the person or persona you want, you can, you can take that Facebook page or Twitter feed off and, and, you know, good government, you know, Facebook ad, good government, Menlo Park, and, and that's your new, that's your new uh, political persona. Do it, try it, see what works. So, the mistakes are only bad, and this is especially true for, for uh, our digital age, if you don't learn from them. But certainly, if you never make them, you're, you're never going to make progress. Uh, there's going to be people who are upset with you. There's going to be people who are not, never going to vote for you. Fine. And, and if you're running for office, people will attack you. But just do it. Have your plan, stick to your plan, know what your object objectives and priorities are, and, and just do it. Um, I was asked if I knew Evan Lowe, and I, I just happened to have his, his uh, website there. Very well integrated. I, I've known Evan for a long time. I'm a, I'm a fan. Uh, he does a lot of things right, and it turns out he also does a lot of things well. And. Uh, if you go to his website, which is informationally on your campaign, your website is the foundation of your information food chain. That's the, that's the base of your information pyramid or the hub of your information spoke. All, everything should lead to that. But also, your website should connect to all your other social media feeds. Uh, Evan does that uh, especially well. Uh, I took the liberty of, of ch uh, checking up on Assembly Member Chu, and mm -hmm. uh, also does a very good, uh, very good job. Uh, and I especially like that his, uh, all of his outlets, all of his channels, Facebook, tw Twitter, website were optimized for mobile. We haven't talked about that, but. Social media does that automatically, but if you're building a website, make sure it's optimized for mobile because that's, that's not only important, but it's uh, growing uh, by leaps and bounds in importance. And next, I think that's all I have, and uh, some tools that I, I recommend uh, or that I've found to be very useful. 
I have a handout that uh, I'll be giving uh, uh, from Hootsuite about you know five basic steps to have a good social media program. There's nothing new here. Uh, it's really just a matter of communication hygiene. Hootsuite is great. It has it has a freemium service, as I believe Sprout Social does. It allows you to create a dashboard so you can track and post to various uh, social media channels. Uh, Facebook Blueprint is a free Facebook educational program that Facebook runs on how to implement best practices for Facebook. There's a lot you can do, uh, and even more than you think. Google Plus, Google Plus is, is good uh, from my experience, not because it's one of the dominant social uh, uh, social media platforms, but because it facilitates uh, search engine optimization, which is what you want. If any one of us were to look for anything from a restaurant to where to buy the shoes that we like, any, we would grab our phone and start searching the internet. And it turns out that's exactly the same behavior for uh, political information. If people, when people are looking for what's going on politically, if I'm a likely voter, I'm on the internet. You want to be optimized for uh, search engine hits. And I think there was, uh, might have been one more slide. Um, if you're on a tight budget, I can definitely recommend Canva. It's something you use where you can put together professionally looking campaigns, uh, campaign pieces for, for free. Very good. It, it has a freemium model as well where you can use quite a bit for free. Uh, and um, yeah, it's the last uh, uh, it's a, slide. A, it's a nation one? builder. Yeah. Okay. It's a, that's what it's um, nation builder. And, uh, and then for, for those campaigns that have a few more resources, I def, uh, there's uh, two websites. They tend to be generally partisan. One is nationbuilder.com. And that is, uh, I think that's generally uh, seen as Republican. These are, these are very sophisticated uh, campaign management uh, online services. And is it uh, uh, NGP yeah, dot, uh, there's another Democratic one that's, NGP Van. what is it? NGP Van. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. NGP Van, uh, which tends to be a little more Democratic, provide very similar services. If you've got the, the resources to bring in pros, do it. That, that doesn't bulletproof you in any, by any means, uh, but it, is it helpful? It's helpful. Uh, and so those are two uh, campaign platforms, and I know there's many other that are, that are much smaller. Uh, I do have a handout from, uh, from uh, Hootsuite here, just how to create a social media strategy in five easy steps. Uh, there's much, much more robust plans that you, can, that you can implement that, of course, take much, much more time. Keep it simple. Simple as your friend, easy as everyone's friend. Uh, so just be sure to prioritize and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Right.